Hello everybody, it's Tuesday the 19th January 2021 and it is science time. So, these are our words, our vocab that we have been looking at as part of our new science topic all about light. And last week we learned about this word and this word and this word, but we will come back to those uh, shortly. I'd like you to see our two new vocabulary words that have appeared on our vocab mat and we will be using those today. So we've got the word reflector and we've got the word source. So just first though, let's recap. This is your anchor skill task. So I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to look at it. There are our three vocabulary words that we learned about last week. Translucent, opaque and transparent. Have a look at my three statements here and have a go at matching them. Which one belongs to which? I'll let you pause it and then we'll talk about it. Okay, and welcome back. And well done if you said that transparent is the one that lets all the light through. So, for example, a clear water bottle or a glass that you drink from and that means that translucent is the one that scatters the light as it passes through so for example uh, coloured glass like stained glass windows or ice cubes uh, or anything like that which leaves us with opaque and opaque is the one that lets absolutely no light through whatsoever it is a hard surface for example a book or a, a wooden door. So today we're going to be learning about light sources and reflectors. So we need to discuss the two questions. What is a light source and what is a reflector? So we are going to investigate, can we always see light using those two key questions today? So, let's recap again. What is a light source and what is a reflector? So, here you go. Light sources. A light source is an object that makes its own light. So, my example on the slide here is a torch. But there are lots and lots of other light sources that make their own light. And a reflector of light is an object that is not a light source, but they can reflect light given by something else. So, for example, um, you would say the classic one, obviously, is a mirror, but anything with a shiny surface is a reflector of light. So, have a look at these objects here. I'm going to invite you to pause the video at this point. I'm going to invite you to look at your sheet. I would like you at home to either cut and stick or list the object, however you want to do it. Is it a light source or is it a reflector? Okay, and when you've done that, you can then upload that work for me later. The children in class are also going to be completing this task now. I look forward to seeing that first piece of science work. Okay, so as we have discussed, light travels in a straight line. When it hits an object, it is reflected and it is bounced off. If the reflected light hits our eyes, we can see the object. So light from a torch hitting an object is then reflected and we then see the light in our eyes. Reflective light. Some surfaces and materials reflect light well. Other materials do not reflect light well. Reflective surfaces and materials can be very useful. And these are some examples for you. So, reflective strips on coats or bags that mean you can be seen at night. These are also useful for firefighters or builders who may work in a dark and dangerous environment. So, I'm sure you've all seen on book bags and on your school coats and things such as that, you have special reflective strips, just like firefighters do on their clothes too. 
Cat's eyes help drivers see in the road because they reflect light with their headlamps. And next time you are out at night, have a little look in the middle of the road. You can see little dots of light that look a little bit like a cat's eye. And they are there to help reflect the light from your headlamp so you can see the way you are going. Mirrors obviously are the most important reflecting light, but they are also useful for cars because they allow them to see what's going on behind them. And then something called retro reflectors are used in road signs so that drivers can see them. And this is special paint pigmentation that is used and it will help reflect the car's headlights so that drivers can read car signs in the dark. Have a think, can you think of any other places where you might see reflective light? So, I mentioned earlier about school book bags, but we now need to think about how we can design a reflective book bag that will help keep children safe. It needs to have reflective parts on it so that drivers can see the book bag easily when the car headlights shine on it. So the reflective strip you can choose, it can be made of silver, but this is a metal that is hard to shape. It could be made of mirror, special plastic mirrored material. It could be made of moon dust because the moon, believe it or not, is a reflective surface. Or it could be used of gold, a soft metal but expensive. Now think about it, we need to mass produce this book bag, so which one is going to be the best one to use? Now, as lovely as it would be to go on a trip to the moon to get some moon dust, we cannot do that, unfortunately. So I think that special mirrored plastic would probably be the best choice. But it is up to you now, my darlings, because this is the sheet that you've got to complete. This is your second science task. You should now know which material is best for the Brilliant Book Bag Company and use it I would like you to design on your sheet your book bag and where you want the reflective strips to go. Now, if you ask your adults very nicely, they might let you have a little bit of tin foil to label this up with. But if you can't do that, that's fine. Just show me with labels. I'd then like you to tell me what material it is and why. And I'd like you to tell me what the material is and what it looks like. Okay, my darling, so that is your second activity. I look forward to seeing these book bag designs later. Don't forget to upload your work for me as usual. Okay, have a lovely day, everyone.